Good morning YouTube and welcome back to our latest solar installation. Looks pretty good doesn't it? We're currently taking a reading of 5.7 kilowatt. Should we go and have a look how we achieve this at this beautiful Welsh cottage? Now we're on a ground mount today installing solar PV modules at this property. With so many properties here in West Wales being really photogenic and often quite old, we can't always put them on the roofs. So we're going to show you start to finish another option giving you the opportunity to install solar panels. So this customer approached us and they were looking for some energy independence. Living rurally here, they had great opportunity for a ground mounted system. This meant we didn't have to put any solar panels on their house. With it being a lovely Welsh cottage, there was no need to ruin the aesthetics of it. They also had some budget available to install more than they possibly needed. And this gave us a little bit of freedom to put a slightly larger array and use more efficient modules. And then with that extra power, they'll be able to charge the battery fully every day in the summer and then use some to heat their home. So with the array being in a field though, on the top of a hill, we had to factor in the wind. So we've got more ground screws in this array than we normally would have. Even though we've invested in the right equipment for this job, you just don't know about the ground conditions till you get to the job. I can do as many tests as I want, but until we measure out the array and start piling in the ground screws, we don't know what we're gonna hit. So the boys have started this morning. We've got two ground screws in and they're working really, really well. I've just got to hope that the rest of them go in as smoothly. So this is our Avant 635. We invested in this about four years ago when we started getting busier on these ground mounts. We've got an auger on the front of it and that lets us put these big screws into the ground. And these ground anchors then let us build the array from them. These give us the, the support we need. So this means this solar array is not going anywhere, no matter what wind or weather facing it, it'll stay where it is. We're going to carry on getting these ground screws in with the machine and that will be all the machine work done. In the meantime, I'm going to get some of the team to start assembling the frame on the ground and then once the screws are in, we can just lift them into place and start putting that all together and tightening it up. Once that's together, we've got the rails to go on and then the modules will go on. Modules aren't with us this morning. The wholesalers are dropping them off about half past one. So that's going to give us the morning to get everything mounted and constructed. If we then have some time to wait, we do have the power wall here ready to go. So we, we can all get together, get that in place, get that mounted. And by the time the modules come, we'll all be here ready just to mount them on the ground. So we've been spoilt here in West Wales with beautiful, beautiful sun. But of course, the day that I'm out of the office on the tools with the boys, it's gone a bit grey. It's going to try and rain this afternoon, but we're hoping there'll only be showers. So this morning, um, basically we've done is measured up the ground to put our anchors into the ground to support the um, framework of the where the panels will sit on. So what we did was measured out the total length of the panels and used a big long tape measure to go down basically the field. So we popped two ground anchors at the far point and this point and put a string line across and then used that as a guide to make it as straight as possible so it makes putting the, the framework into these uh, anchors as easy as possible, basically. So this next part of the project, we're basically marking out um, where our next set of posts are going to be going. And to do that, um, we're using a simple equation that you use in school, the Pythagoras theorem. So we're working out basically our diagonal angle, which is our hypotenuse, so that we know where each post is going to be going for the next set. So as you can see, our boys are hard at work, working out our A squared, our B squared, to give us our hypotenuse C squared, allowing us to uh, measure and check lead correct uh, where our posts are gonna be going.
Right, so as you can see behind me, the boys are putting in the last of the screws now and trying to do the last of lining. Um, we've decided to put it in this higher part in the middle of the backfield at the moment because there's a lot of foliage and tall trees around. So what we've had to do is work out where the sun comes up and we have the longest duration of sun during the day. Then we can make the most efficient of these panels. We can try and make sure they hit the sunlight for the longest amount of time. Um, and plus, it's also not going to stop the farmer from cutting his grass. It's not going to get in the way. It'll be an obstruction. We've got all the main frames up now. The boys put them together and they've dropped them into the piles. Now the next job is going to be to level them all up, straighten them all up. So we'll get the two end ones set, put a string line across and make sure they're all even. We're going for our 30 degrees here to make sure we've got optimum angle for the sun. We've got great, great orientation here, so they're not going to have any issues with generation. Once we've got this all lined up, we can get the rails on. And the next step will be modules. Of course, we don't have them yet. But I'm hoping that the wholesalers will be able to get their van in here on the field. And we can unload them straight and then get them straight on. If they can't, we've got a bit of walking to do. Well, the boys have got a bit of walking to do. Okay, so now we've finished building the frame, ready for the panels to be delivered and we can mount them then. Um, originally, the system was actually meant to be two different arrays. However, it got split, well, I say split, conjoined all into one to make one long array as a side to two. So to go with that, the customer supplied us with a six core armoured to the array, which means that we can now run three strings from the panels back to the inverter. Um, what the strings are essentially circuits for the panels to maximize efficiency by lumping them into different groups. So instead of all your panels being all on one together, you have them set on three. So if one starts working poorly, the other two are perfectly fine. That's what the black cables the boys are running behind me are now. So we've got some going to the far end, some going to the middle, and we'll have some closer to the start because um, they'll be our group locations. So we'll have a positive and a negative for both. So a flow and a return. If So the boys are currently putting the panels in place now. Um, the way we've done it today is measured where we want our end panels and then we've run a, um, a ping line down through the centre so that's where all the panels will meet so it makes it all nice and even straight line. So this project's going to have another Powell 3. We really like fitting these because they are so simple. We've got a bit of a challenge here, as you've seen with the boys, where they were showing you it's going to be fixed. It's really narrow. So although we invested in the trolley, um, that's not going to work. But Will's got the handles here, the ones that come with the trolley. So we're going to get them fitted and we're just going to have to use some muscle to get it in. So we've come to the end of day one and we've managed to get the array all together. The boys are just finishing off panelling it now. That's gone really, really smoothly. That's probably the smoothest ground mount we've ever done. Behind us though, you can see the power wall. That was a fiddle. Getting it into that gap was real fun. But it's there, it's on the wall and we all managed to lift it in. Next stage, tomorrow, we'll be getting the gateway mounted, wiring all the AC side and connecting the DC up in the field. Good morning guys, welcome back to day two here in Borlan near Talsan. So the two main things we're going to be doing today is connecting up our DC array up here um, with three DC isolators and then we'll be moving down to the mains where we'll be doing some Tesla Powell wiring um, and hopefully commission it today. Um, come with us. So 
So what I'm doing now is uh, working out uh, my strings. So we've got three strings and in total we have 28 panels. So we're gonna have two strings with nine panels on and one string with 10. So I'm just working out where they basically come to. What we have here is our first DC isolation point split into three different sections so that uh, if there's a fault found in any area of the system, we can isolate it in thirds instead of the whole thing so that there are two separate areas that are always running so that power is all, always being supplied back to um, the client's home. So what we have are our DC cables coming in and then we have our armoured cable going under the ground which is protected and then that's going back and uh, to the inverter. Now that we've completed up in the field, um, we've come down to where the mains of the property comes in and we're going to be doing some of the gateway wiring and mounting more DC isolators for the armoured cable that's come up from the field. After all that is completed, um, we'll move on to the commission side of things and then um, the customer will have a full working system um, from the 28 modules up in the field coupled with the Tesla Powerwall free and the gateway backup so he has full backup if um, he has an outage of power. With all of these added together he will have full energy independence. Hi guys, we're back here in Bulshan with the ground mount uh, system we've currently installed. Um, so I'm going to talk you through what is going on in the mains location. Um, so we'll start off with the Tesla Powerwall 3 here. And then we're moving along, we've got three DC isolators for the three strings coming down from the ground mount. We've got our AC isolator, which is coming from the Tesla Gateway 2. And then we've got cables coming from the meter cabinet to feed the Tesla Gateway 2. Having a quick look at the app um, with the Tesla one, I can see that the solar panels up on the ground mount is generating roughly six kilowatt. And the Tesla Powell 3 is taking nearly five kilowatt of that. And then the rest is being used in the home. And they are currently using nothing from the grid, which is showing that they're fully dependent on the solar PV array. So the long-term benefits these customers have with this ground mount system is um, they can sell back to the grid at probably maybe 15 pence a unit and then long term they should see that all coming back into their pocket. What this really shows is you can have all the benefits of a solar installation without it affecting the character of your home. <laughs>